we got a massive Thomas Suchek shaped problem. Six foot four Czech uh, potato salad problem at the moment. It has to be said. What what I just witnessed against Newcastle and and that this 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 was even I had the edge taken off by a couple of beers as well. By the way, what I witnessed was really really poor. Joel Linton, who. I think he played wide uh, when he was... Did he played in Germany? I think he played in Germany. He played wide in Germany. Steve Bruce, I think, bought him for 40-odd million. So, you know, a, a decent amount of money. 40-odd million from uh, from Germany. And turned him into a striker. Didn't score that many goals. Eddie Howe has come in. And, he, and anyway, it doesn't matter. He's either a striker or a winger. Choose whichever one you want. And Eddie Howe said, you'll do for me. You'll play in midfield. Uh, Thomas Suchek is um, his captain. Czech Republic. He has double figures for goals last season. It was a pivotal point. It, it was somebody who we were worried at a point last season that Bayern Munich might come in and nick him off us for 65, 70 million. And we were worried, saying we can't lose him. I'm not saying I want to lose him now, but I have to deal with with, with what's going on here with Thomas Suchek because Thomas Suchek was outclassed by this sort of makeshift part-time midfielder who's played seven or eight games in central midfield. I mean, completely outclassed. Even in the area, by the way, that Suchek is meant to be dominant in in the air, I didn't think he was any better than Joe Lidson in the air either. Um, was a little bit embarrassing. Like, I'm not, Willock played some part. I, I get it. Willock, actually, Willock had quite a good game, to be honest with you. I thought midfield, we were... We were decimated in midfield. I say decimated. We were dominated. Actually, for the second game running, midfield is, is a massive problem for us. And that's why I had to separate and do a video. That's why yesterday's video is attack is a real problem. Well, now I'm talking about midfield is a real problem. Don't worry. Don't worry, because actually Craig Dawson means I don't have to do a defence is a problem. And by the way, I thought Zuma played really well as well. As a little word for Dawson, because I wasn't able to do the review with Geo, obviously, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful performance. But, and here's, here's the but, like I said in yesterday's video, if we're relying on Dawson to, to score us our goals, relying on a defender to score us our goals, it's a bit of a worry to, to help our to help our attack. The fact that we're relying on a a, a loan who turned into a two, three million pound journeyman signing from Watford from the championship to be our man at a match match and shore up our defence then that's a massive worry as well. But, but forget that. Defence was good. Dawson was good. Zuma was good. In fact, Dawson was outstanding and Zuma was good. And uh, and, and once Johnson came on, he stopped that, that flow of attacks that was coming down that, that side um, with Murphy there. Um, anyway, I'll back onto the midfield. You almost get the impression, I know Gio covered it in the Moyes having his favourites, but we do the player ratings on, on Patreon. I almost get the impression that Thomas Suchek could have play have a three out of ten and a three out of ten and a three out of ten and a three out of ten, and Moyes still wouldn't drop him. I mean, it was awful. It was embarrassing. He looked like he was stuck in tree called. A passing was poor. The first touch was poor. A couple of decent tackles, and I thought, to be fair to him, uh, you know, when in the second half when Dawson had the shot, yes, with his foot, not the goal Dawson scored, the other shot he had in the box, I thought it was a good. Header down from Suchek. Picked him up well. Uh, but I, I counted three three tackles and a header. It ain't good enough because I'll tell you what, I, I, I couldn't. Oh, there's not, not enough pages in my book. Pen of Destiny. There's not enough pages in my book, by the way, to chart and document how, how much good stuff Joe Linton did. And you have to make comparisons. A direct comparison. I was doing it last week against Leicester. It ain't good enough. It is not good enough at all. And I do wonder what David Moyes is going to do about it. Because you look at Crowell on the bench, and I'm not, I'm not saying Crowell is the answer. But surely there must be an answer somewhere. David Moyes has a reluctance to play Crowell. Let, let's take Crowell, let's take Chesters, who was on the bench. We've got a couple of people that could play in midfield there, right? How, how can he think that either Crowell or Chesters will do worse than Thomas Suchek. Let's say Thomas Suchek was a 3 out of 10. I've not decided yet. But let's say he was a 3 out of 10. You might think I'm being generous. No one's coming in here saying, I think he was. I think you got it wrong, mate. I think he was a 7 out of 10. No, you don't. Nobody does. Right? Let's say he was a 3 out of 10. Just how bad does Moyes think Chester's or Crowell would be? Or Noble? 
Does he think it'd be worse? You, I mean, you couldn't be worse. Well, I guess you can. You could be one. He must think there'd be a one or a two. In which case, case well, what's the point? What's the point in having Chester's involved with the first team? What's the point in bringing Crow in on loan? I mean, it must have been hoping beyond hope that Suchek, that we might get a corner and Suchek might, might head it in. Let's be perfectly honest. Even then he was a bloody hindrance. Go and look at Dawson's goal. He got in the way. Dawson had to... He, he ran, literally Suchek ran into Dawson's space. Dawson had to push him out of the way. Gets out of the way. And, and for, I don't know, he managed it. I thought it was a miraculous header. By the way, this video is sponsored by the One Football app. You can download the One Football app by using the link below. It's literally under there. Under there. You download it to your phone, your mobile device. Use the QR code up there if you really want to. And what it'll do is it'll put all the West Ham news into one place for you. It's going to make miserable reading. I've got to be honest with you. I, I, you know, oh, I can't believe it. Anyway, if you want to read more about West Ham, the One Football app is free. I promise you, it's not normally this miserable, but but it, it will be. But don't worry, we'll probably be linked with Kylian Mbappe as well, which will make for a nice read. And I'll be back tomorrow to have a little laugh about that. Not to be taken seriously. Um... To solve a problem like Suchek, I, I don't know. You couldn't really clip Declan Rice's wings any more than had been done in that. Uh, because it was actually needed Declan Rice to try and do something. Declan wasn't at his best. Let's be fair, Declan Rice cost us the first goal. Uh, it, was, it was a crappy header. It was poor. It was really poor. And it wasn't the only poor thing he did. He almost gifted um, oh someone. I think it was Joe Linton. Almost gifted Joe Linton or Willock a chance really, really early as well. Um, that being said, he came back into it, and if we were going to do anything from midfield, it was still him trying to stretch, stretch the Newcastle defence. It was still him running down, cutting him run down the left wing at one point, run down the right wing. Um, he must have been, Bowie must have been looking at Rice, thinking, please help me out, because these other lot can't. Because Antonio can't. Because Ben Rama can't. Fornells can't. Suchek can't. We can't keep relying on Declan Rice. Um, I mean, Declan Rice wasn't wasn't a 10 out of 10, but he weren't a 3 out of 10 either. We can't rely on Declan Rice being a 10 out of 10 every week. We really can't. At some point, someone has to do something about that midfield. They are knackered. They're knackered. Absolutely exhausted. You can see it. Earlier on in the season, we would have periods where... we And, and last season, where we would, we'd have such high energy, we would almost grind teams into submission. We were the most physical team. We were the fittest team. Not anymore, OK? Newcastle more physical than us, and that's why I'm disappointed with Suchek. I thought he was out-muscled as well as everything else. Outpaced, I get it. He was out-muscled and outworked in this one. And what I felt this one, this time, at the, in that game and Leicester, we were able to be intense for p small pockets. Three minutes here, five minutes there. We weren't able to sustain a good half or, or anything remotely close to it because I just think we're absolutely exhausted. We cannot string together any passage of play where we have any intensity or any drive at all. And the thing I find weird about all of this is you can see it and I can see it. You can see our levels have dipped. They absolutely have. The club have got all this stuff. They've got all this data written down. There is... It's all this sports science stuff. They can tell who's run more, how many sprints they've done, who's got a lactic acid build-up. They have all this data, but at what point do you actually use it? At what point do you think, well, actually trying something different might break the malay of what we're seeing? Because it is so lacking in intensity, it's so lacking in, in vibrancy and any fizz... That we just look flat. And that's, that, that's it. You look at us, I think we look flat the whole time. And I really felt for the first time that, that it really sort of impacted Bowen. I thought Target had a good game, don't get me wrong. But Bowen has played against better right backs than Target and, and done okay, you know? Um, sorry, left backs than Target and done okay. But I, just, I almost wonder if it's a step too far. He can't do it all on his own. And, and unfortunately, if Suchek's not going to weigh in with the goals, if Ben Rama's not going to perform, if Fornells is not going to perform, and if, if Antonio is is oh, just hoping for some little spark to ignite him, to get him going, if that's not going to happen, at some point Bowen's form is going to dip. He can't keep bailing us out. And do you know what? Against Newcastle, he couldn't bail us out then either. Um, what are we going to do about it? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, we've got Wolves coming up in the next game and they are even harder to break down from New the Newcastle. And if we don't sort it out, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what message this sends to the young players either. 
I've got to say, what message has this sent? Oh, right, in the end, Johnson got in by by default, last last choice. Yeah, Sue fell, whatever, can't make it. Uh, we'll put Fredericks in there. Oh, actually, he was crap. Do you know what, Johnson, you go. What the others are thinking, Oco, Flex, Chester, these type of people are looking at that team playing like that. I bet there's a couple. I mean, uh, what's it, Young Forson signed a new contract in the week. But he's looking at it thinking, I'm going to do better than that. Now, is Forson or Chester's a better player than Suchek? No. But drop him. Just drop him. Drop him for two or three games. Drop him for a game. Do something. Do something, because at the moment, I don't look, I didn't believe all that story about there was mutiny and, and Suchek was demanding a pay rise and the rest of it. Even get one at the moment. If Suchek came to me with a pay rise at the moment, I'd say, no, mate, you've been crap for months. Not crap, but you've been out of form. You're out of form. Get on a goal-scoring trail again. Do something. And, and we'll, we'll talk about it. And there were times during that game where I thought Declan Rice was at the back and he let Suchek go. And they were taking it in turns. I've no doubt about that. I would say go and watch that game again. Don't. But I'm telling you, they took it in turns. One drops back, one goes forward. Suchek had chances to attack. Just crap at it. Just passing, technique, everything was terrible. He needs a rest. I don't think he's turned crap overnight. I think he's knackered. I think he's knackered. And this is why it's important that you use these young players. You, you give them a little... You give someone's legs... Just even 20 minutes rest here or there, a game here or there, a game every 10, something. Get one of the youngsters in, get Crowley, get Noble in, whatever. Just give the man a rest. Anyway, that's it. I am going to be back with, uh, with perhaps my hopefully more silliness tomorrow. Uh, just a frustrating, frustrating performance against Newcastle. Maybe we've got, maybe we've got away with one. If I'm honest, I don't think anyone... There was, I, I weren't like the goalkeepers were jumping around making loads of saves in that game. So I think we've got away with it. Just didn't have enough in us to even test their goalkeeper. And you know what? That ain't good enough.